After learning how to be less hung up on stuff and decluttering my entire apartment, I still had yet to practice the second half of Marie Kondo's method, the very thing that gives name to her book, Tidying. I ended up securing a place right in the middle of my decluttering process, so everything I was keeping was just packed away into boxes without much thought, and it was unpacked without much thought as well, as moving was already keeping me busy. I've been here since the end of February, and whilst most things are quite packed away neatly, I feel like I can still optimize the space a little bit better, and I would be keen to at least try Marie's method of folding things and kind of storing things away, just to see whether it could help me uh, stay on top of things a bit better. So Marie has a set of principles that apply to her tidying and storing things away, as well as some specific tips, but I guess there's a bit of a less of a step-by-step -step approach as uh, she goes through with the decluttering. So to make this a little bit less overwhelming for me, I'm going to tidy up using the same categories and order that I followed when decluttering. And also, if you're new here, this video is part of my self-transformation vlog series where I attempt to glow up and become a better version of myself. If you are into this kind of thing and you want to follow along, I suggest you click subscribe and tick the notification bell as I do post on a bit of an erratic schedule. Otherwise, my regular content focuses on sustainable productivity, self-improvement, sort of navigating your early 20s student new grad life uh, with a bit of psychology sprinkled in as well. So I'm going to leave my shameless self-promotion here and get right into the video. For clothes, Marie suggests that clothes should be folded where possible, as that saves a lot more space than hanging clothes. I definitely agree, and I'm used to folding most of my clothes. But in my new room, my wardrobe is pretty big, and I'm not very keen on investing on extra shelving, as I can easily fit all my clothes inside hanging anyway. It was a little bit hard to fold clothes, especially tops, using Marie's method, but I got there in the end. Leggings were a lot easier to fold though, and saved a lot of space when they rolled them up. I know this isn't clothing, but I decided to fold my bed stuff next. Trying to make fitted sheets look neat was really difficult, but I found a tutorial that I was able to follow. It's not perfect, but it looks a lot better than before. the top I've got my loungewear this is kind of sports athleisure stuff these are all like very slinky small tops that just don't really make sense hung up and I'm quite surprised there's like still so much space so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that and then the bottom two trays are my towels sheets this is my box of pillowcases for hanging clothes Marie suggests to organize clothes by category I've pretty much done this already as my wardrobe is already divided up into different sections. She also suggests to arrange clothes to rise to the right as this makes the wardrobe seem lighter. For each category, I try to put a balance of heavy, dark or long clothes on the left and shorter, thinner and lighter clothes on the right. It was a bit difficult and I kind of had to prioritize length above any other characteristic of my clothing so that I could end up with the effect that I wanted.
Folding scarves to stand up like this makes me want to wear them more. Now for bags, Marie suggests to put similar kinds of bags inside each other, but this didn't really work for me as a lot of my bags are really different shape. I tried different ways of storing them in a way that makes them look neat and helps me know what I have. In the end, I found a pretty good way of storing them all sideways so that I can see all of them at once. Marie seems pretty hardline on not bowling up socks, and instead she suggests folding them. It was a bit tedious to fold all of these socks, and it really made me look at how worn out a lot of them were, so I guess folding them might help me keep the section decluttered. Overall, I'm not sure that I believe that the value of folding socks and underwear outweighs the effort, but I definitely thought that it was worth to try it out. But a great suggestion that I could get on board with is to divide drawers up using shoeboxes. This worked pretty well for my socks and underwear, but I didn't really have enough stockings to warrant a box, so I switched it out. And this is the end result. In both of these drawers, I was surprised by the amount of space I saved. There's not a lot of specific guidance in the book around storing books, so I've tried to play around with rearranging the books in a way that makes the bookshelf generally look less cluttered. I have a lot more books here than in my previous video, and that's because I now have a housemate. I ended up splitting the shelf in half for both of our books, as that was the most practical thing to do for us. And then arranging them by colour, which ended up looking pretty cool. I got rid of my papers when I decluttered, but to enhance the way that I store my remaining papers, I added labels for them. My skincare stuff was already looking really good, but my makeup needed some better organising. I tried standing up the product like Marie suggests, but it only really ended up working for the eyeshadows. My hair stuff was a little difficult to organise too, especially following Marie's principle of standing things up. But I think I made some improvement in making it look neater, at least. I left my jewellery as it was, and went on with the rest of kimono.
This shelf is definitely a bit of a gathering place of different odds and ends, but I did my best to sort out each box and keep most of the things here as a sort of storage for things I might need on the go, as well as command hooks and bellow stuff. But the main idea behind this is that at the end of the day, like Murray suggests, I will empty the contents of my bag into the tray at the top, and then put my bag away. Another collection of random kimono is this shelf. These boxes, they're not really great for storing things upright, like Murray suggests, which is why I think they end up being cluttered. But I was pretty set on working with what I had. This box of bags turned out especially great. The box of cords was a bit hard to tidy up and make it look neat, but I used little wires to bundle up cords of the same type, which helped me organise the box more. Next, our cleaning supplies. Most of them are in our laundry space, and some are in the kitchen. I rearranged all of the cleaning products by type, and labelled them so that we don't have to rummage through to find something. I added command hooks to hang what I could, and this is the end result. For under the sink, I tried to make sure that only things that are relevant to cleaning the kitchen and dishes were here. Our kitchen storage is not great at all. These shelves above the fridge space are empty as they're very deep and high up, and not very practical to use. I ended up using that space for things neither me nor my housemate use often, like spare tablecloths and thermos. I've rearranged the kitchen drawers in a way that's practical and appears less cluttered. Next, I tried to condense things together, like Tupperware was in two different places for some reason. So I think the main issue with this pantry is that the shell it's quite deep. So my idea for this is that the two shelves here are going to be kind of divided up into me and my housemate, kind of maybe having snacks, and then this shelf kind of having all of the kind of starchy noodles, pasta stuff. And we've made some progress. Now there's this cupboard which has a bunch of stuff that really belong in the pantry. So I've added these on as well. And the final result is a better use of pantry space. I've reserved the cupboards near the stove exclusively for sauces and spices, and things used during cooking. Marie doesn't have much advice for storing things like this, other than storing them in a way that makes sense and ensures that you know what you have on hand. So I tried to keep usability in mind when reorganising this section. Finally, I was already happy with the way we stored our cups and glasses, but the dishes and pans needed a bit of tidying. I had a bit of a limited space to work with, but I tried to generally organise the dishware by type and frequency of use. I did the same for the pots and pans, with bigger items and things we use less often at the back. So that's it for this episode. Now that I worked on my environment, I'm ready to tackle the next step in my glow-up journey.